Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, I actually had a different video plan for today. I'll get into that a little bit, but let's go ahead and get set up with our canvas first. So I knew that I wanted to make a custom canvas for the particular thing that I wanted to draw today because I want to fit as many chibis as I can onto one canvas. So I went ahead, already changed the specs. After that, I went ahead and changed the background color to be the usual typical kind of like warmer muted gray color that I like to choose so that we don't work with a completely white background. So the format that I have it currently at ends up being a little bit too small so I will add in extra kind of like chunk of space afterwards to add another row of chibis but let's go ahead and start to draw our first little OC but I guess I should have mentioned earlier that uh, today's sketching session is basically I'm wanting to draw all of my current OCs and this will include the OC that I made from like a previous pick crew, which is like the female one, and as well as Selwyn, which I never really introduced, but I will kind of like only briefly talk about him here and there until I get both a concrete design and a little bit more things fleshed out for him. So to kind of start off, I wanted to kind of like stay in my comfort zone a little bit and draw Maseki first. They kind of break my way into drawing chibis today as well as just drawing in general because I did take a tiny 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 break of drawing from digital because I was working on a traditional piece and sadly I'm going to not upload that video of the piece that I just did because just poor timing and I feel like it's insensitive a little bit to post it at this time so I'm gonna bump it to probably later on in the month or depending on how things will be. We'll see if that kind of footage even gets to see the light of day. It was supposed to be an ASMR video with alcohol markers, so if I end up do scrapping it for some reason or I feel like it's not appropriate to post anymore, I will go ahead and just do a different ASMR session with a different drawing with the alcohol markers because it has been a while since I've done that. But because of that, the kind of urged me to want to draw something a little bit more low-key for today's session which is why i wanted to draw my ocs and i kind of wanted to draw them more in like a chibi style first as well as adding flowers that i think would visually fit them so please don't ask me about which flowers i chose for each of the characters for some of the flowers i do know the names of but because I was picking a lot of the flowers for the OCs visually rather than like finding the meaning or like, you know, finding flowers that relate nicely to the character, I purely picked it off of visuals and I didn't really do a lot of research into it. So I don't really know some of the names for some of the flowers that I chose alongside with the fact that when I was browsing, I found a lot of photos of like AI flowers, which I found a little bit shocking just because like I was looking at very specific colors for each of the flowers that I was looking up and I think it's very hard to find like green flowers. So when I was looking it up, I think there was like a lot of AI generated green flowers and you know, at first glance, I was not able to tell that it was AI until I saved it and I was looking at it again and I'm like, mm, it looks quite off. So yeah, uh, apparently AI flowers are a thing. But let's talk a little bit more about the, the chibis themselves because I've mentioned in some previous videos as well that I tend to like drawing chibis or doing more like finished work that requires line work in Clipsio Paint or Paint Tool Side just because I find it a little bit more manageable. So today's session will just be purely sketching and a little bit of, I guess, like base coloring or just like rough coloring of all the characters for today. So in the future, maybe next week, I will take them into Clip Studio Paint and we can go ahead and do line work and fully color them and make them all cute and shiny. And I think that would be kind of just kind of cute to have. I would love to make stickers of them just for like personal use and maybe... Hopefully, later on in this year, I will be able to reopen my store at some point once I get some personal stuff out of the way. But for the most part, every time I draw chibis, I forget how much I just love drawing them. So I do like the idea of just being able to condense the character alongside with playing around with the poses. And I 
kind of like playing around with the idea of being like if they are perceived as small and tiny i kind of like the idea of like surrounding things being a lot larger hence why i wanted to have the flowers to be quite large and they're kind of like interacting with it either like holding them gesturing to them kind of that kind of thing i just think it's kind of cute and i used to do like illustrations of masaki being like a little flower gatherer and he's like really tiny with a basket on his back and he would collect flowers and i always liked that so i definitely wanted to draw you know larger flowers with them because i think it's kind of cute so yeah that's kind of the concept for today's little chibi pieces for the most part and in terms of who I'm drawing, so if you're not familiar with my OCs, I uh, will hopefully put them on the screen or I'll put the name on the screen depending on who I'm drawing at the time maybe so it'll be a little bit easier because there's definitely three OCs that I haven't really talked about because they're like new and fresh and then I have one that's more like a mascot which I haven't talked about or drawn in a long time so I'll make sure to put context of them on the screen so starting from left to right and I think I was able to put about five characters on the top and then we'll add the later three at the very bottom after I expand the canvas but starting from left to right so we started off with Masaki who is like my florist OC he's also I guess if you had to choose or if I had to choose he's kind of like my favorite child um, I'm very very biased but I'm hopefully going to be drawing more of all of my OCs more this year and hopefully being more comfortable drawing them a little bit more easily because Masaki is definitely like my comfort character and I can draw him very easily and I like drawing him so yeah that's Masaki uh then we have Koji so he's kind of my little kid character he's a little bit more spunky a little bit fiery a little bit hot tempered but he's a little bit more on like the naive side and he views Masaki as a kind of like a mentor or like an older brother figure oh i guess i'll like briefly mention their ages as well so i have Masaki set as 21 he's also a university student studying floriculture and botany and he works part-time at a florist shop or a flower shop then after that we have koji who is I think I have him set to be around 12 or 13, so like starting middle school and just coming out of elementary. And his grandparents run the flower shop to where Masaki works at. It's kind of like their relationship, I guess. After that, we have Kaisen, who is one of my new OCs, and he's going to be kind of like best friends with Masaki. And I don't have a headcanon for them yet, nor do I have him fully fleshed out in terms of the story. So right now, I have it set that he works in a plant nursery. So he's very like business focused on, I guess, like getting plants out there and stuff. While Masaki has more of like nurturing side, I guess, towards like plants and flowers. Well, I feel like maybe Kaisen's a little bit more cynical in a sense. We'll see. We'll see where I kind of place him because I might put him in a different context because actually, no, I'll explain it a little bit later because uh, we have room for two more OCs on the very bottom and I'll tell you who those will be kind of like placeholders for, for probably a video later on in the year once I finally think about their designs a little bit more. So after Kaisen, he will be anywhere between I think 21 to 24. I haven't had his age set quite yet. After that, we have Sato, who is the girl kind of with the longer hair with the little bangs kind of coming in front of her face. And she is cousins to Masaki. She is 18. And right now she's working for her parents at a confectionery store. So she does a lot of like sweets uh, making alongside she does like baking and stuff. So that's kind of her character. Then after that, we have Akemi, which is Sato's boyfriend alongside with kind of like childhood friend dynamic. So Akemi is also 18. He's also just entered university and is studying, I believe I'm going to put him in VCD. So probably visual communication designs or some kind of design of some sort. And with the kind of first row done, I'm going to go ahead and resize the canvas to add basically another 1000 pixels bump downwards so we can kind of extend the canvas to be a lot larger. So right here, you can see that I have now enough space to add a second row of characters which we have three more to go so kind of 
I don't know why I did it in this order, but you can see that this is not like a normal humanoid character. This is my OC or kind of like mascot at the time, Hansike. So he is a little green cat feller and he... I guess he has like fake glasses imprinted on his face. He has like a little tuft of hair on top of his head alongside with his cheeks. He also is mostly, I guess like cream colored and a little bit of a... I don't know if it's like a lime green, if anything. It's kind of like a, like a different green. I keep changing it from time to time. I also made plushes of him at some point. I think about two and a half years ago, I think. So yeah, at the time he was supposed to be my mascot, but I haven't drawn him in a long while. And kind of my goal with him was to basically make like some kind of stationary brand. So I'm still wanting to do that. But character wise, he's supposed to be a little bit more like mischievous or a little bit like clumsy, but he lives to help out. So he's just kind of like a little dude who wants to help uh, humans out and stuff. But in terms of where he is for Masaki's story, basically because they're not in the same universe, I just made him Hansuke, I guess, the cat. Uh, kind of like a mascot character that's like very popular within their universe kind of like hello kitty or pikachu or something like that so just a lovable very memorable character in their universe i've drawn hansuke with like koji and masaki as like little plushes or like little figurines for them so that's kind of where hansuke is so moving along, we have another chibi, which will be a character that you probably haven't seen because I have not introduced him, nor have I drawn him too, too much other than in my sketchbook. So this OC I talked about a little bit when I was making the pit crew video or P crew video. And my friend from Instagram made a template and it required you to use a specific P crew to kind of like make a character for her magical school and you get to choose the character's powers alongside with like assigning some kind of familiar or like an animal companion to the character and all that jazz. So when I was using the P crew, hopefully I'll put the reference on the screen so you guys can see it. And I had like a little blurb of Selwyn's kind of like personality and his power and stuff so I'll go ahead and read that out to you guys just because it's a little bit easier. So uh, Selwyn's representative pet is a seal uh, and his name is Sel so I just took the first part of his name and then for now so I on the little blurb it literally says for now his name shall be Selwyn he's soft-spoken and loves to daydream not super studious but somehow manages can turn liquids into crystal that helps boost magic powers for his allies and in group conflict he likes to act as support but if he's in a tight situation his first instinct is to flee so he's a little bit of a coward and I kind of wanted a character that feels like I know my word choicing choicing word choice isn't gonna be the the best in terms of how i'm gonna describe him in a way i'm gonna say like a pathetic character but what i mean is like they seem kind of like incapable of a lot of things so like i said Selwyn's probably gonna be very much like a coward he's also not very book smart i guess like like i mentioned i guess he manages somehow so i guess he stays within the academy but for the most part i feel like he would lack in a lot of areas but then hyper fixates on one certain area where he super excels at so maybe it's like uh, something to do with his magic and i don't know design wise i think i just slapped a bunch of things from the p crew and i don't know why i gave him these glasses on top of his head so i'm either going to get rid of the glasses or i'll make it a part of his design in a way that helps like maybe enhance his powers or some stuff or able to see his allies health or something so he's able to know when to i guess like better support his allies we'll see because i think it'd be kind of fun to do something more fantasy related for a different uh environment or a different i was gonna say story but i'm not even writing stories for these characters at this point uh but let's move on so the last chibi that's going to be part of our little squad here which will be also part of masaki's story is this character which i have not landed on a name quite yet i have two picked out but i'm not too sure if i want to kind of like stick with them so i'm gonna leave it as blank for now until i finally decide what her name's gonna be 
So the name that I actually have her, like at least like one of the names I was kind of thinking of, I was gonna call her Moriko because like, I believe from the definition that I found for the name, it can mean forest child. And I do want her to have more of like either like a jade green kind of color palette alongside with like black and gray, or I'm gonna lean her towards like a forest green. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I think it would be cute to call her Moriko and then we can call her Rico for short. But let's go on with the sketching. So I went ahead and duplicated my sketch. I hid the second one because it's going to be basically a spare just in case I want to use that later on for something else or if I mess up I can go back to using that sketch again without having to worry that I kind of merged my layers. I'll also set the other one to multiply and then I made a new layer under that and we are basically going to block in the entirety of all the chibis kind of with this gray color as a base. And once I finish blocking in all of the, the gray, I will then alpha lock it because it'll make it a lot easier for me to color and because I don't really have plans of kind of doing a bunch of different layers to color each of the characters, I am just going to alpha lock it and color directly onto this gray layer because it's going to be easier for me to manage rather than juggling a bunch of layers to color... How many characters do we have? I think it's eight, I guess, if it's five and three. So, yeah. Uh, so before we get into the coloring, let me talk about the two last kind of remaining spaces we have on the canvas. So even though I didn't really think about that I was going to potentially have 10 OCs, I probably will maybe sometime this year. So the last remaining two slots are actually going to go to probably Akemi's siblings because I've mentioned earlier that he is going to have two siblings, one that's going to be older and one that's going to be younger. And how I have it in my brain is that I want Akemi to have an older brother that's already in like, I want him to be an office worker. And initially I think I had him as a kind of like a biker bartender. And I do like that kind of, I guess like direction for him, but visually I feel like he's going to kind of overlap too much with Kaisen at this point because when I made Kaisen, I was kind of piggybacking off a little bit of Salwin. So it's like, that's kind of the reason why their color palettes are a little bit similar and their bangs and kind of like framing up their hair is a little bit similar. But to kind of avoid that, I do like the idea of like having salaryman, brother, and then at night, maybe he's like a bartender and he goes like biking and stuff. And I have an idea how I want to like flip his aesthetic from both of them. So I think it would be nice to do that. And then the last OC would be Akemi's younger sister, which is what I have set. But I want her to either be a lot younger, just to have a different dynamic, or to be around the same age as Koji, because... I think it'd be nice to also give Koji like another character that's around his age because I feel like that could be also a fun dynamic as well. So I'm kind of thinking and leaning towards that. And personality wise, yeah, I feel like Akemi's family is like a little bit more stoic, at least for Akemi and probably the younger sister is what I'm probably thinking and maybe have a very doting older brother. So yeah, that's kind of at least the brain vomit in my brain about my OCs currently. I probably will make new OCs in the future, but I find that funny that I've always wanted to have very little amount of OCs after having 12 OCs and I could not manage myself to draw them. But I do like the fact that I feel like I'm confident enough to draw them interacting a lot more, which I think will force me to draw more of them anyways. Here's the hoping that I don't abandon any of these OCs. I think the one that has like the highest chance of being abandoned would probably be Selwyn, just because I would probably have to design a whole new set of OCs for him if I wanted to place him in some kind of story headcanon for myself, just like how I did for Maseki. And at the time, I only had like Maseki, Koji, and Sato as like my general characters for a story. But now that we're expanding, it does make it a little bit easier for me to potentially in the future if I did want to flesh out a story to have a larger cast of characters because 
at least for me, I've always enjoyed like more slice of life anime and manga so I do love when they have a gigantic no not not exactly a gigantic one but a large cast that's very lovable so you know it's kind of nice just having OCs to kind of play around with and potentially like if I do want to make a story then I do have that option so yeah if not I can just do like individual illustrations for them and I will be 100% happy with that too because I don't think you need to have like a story or a background to a character to have that OC exist in a space or for you to draw them. So don't don't feel intimidated to be like, oh, I need to write a story for them or like I'm not good at writing a story to make like said OCs or anything. Things can be like one-offs and I don't know, at least for me because like I have no intentions currently of making like a comic or writing a story for my characters like properly. I'm just gonna have fun and draw things regardless if it like, to, at least to me, if it's not like part of my headcanon, it's not gonna matter. It's just kind of like having fun at that moment with the characters is fine by me. Hmm, I'm trying to think what else did I want to say. I guess we'll just talk about the coloring process for today's video. So because I knew I was not going to end up like rendering probably, I did try to attempt to see if I could clean it up a little bit, but I didn't really want to clean up eight characters knowing that I was going to probably import it to, or I guess like export it to Clip Studio Paint. And then in Clip Studio Paint, I'm going to do the line work and I'll recolor them anyways and hopefully make them a little bit more cohesive as like visually together because some of the colors are a little funky. I know for Kaisen and I'm going to call her Rico for now. Oh, and also Selwyn. I'm probably going to adjust their colors a little bit. So the good thing about using the P-Crew that we were talking about last week is that it just gives you a good kind of like stepping stone or like a base for where you want your character to look like or what your character to look like. And then after that, you can make adjustments. So I did already make adjustments to a little bit of her hair and her top and kind of like thinking about Rico's kind of like aesthetic i do like more of that chic kind of cool i don't know what kind of aesthetic you call it but i like the leather jacket but i kind of want it to be cropped have her have a cropped kind of spaghetti strap top and then after that i would have her have kind of like baggier i forget what they're called like tech wear pants if that makes sense and maybe like belts and stuff i just think she kind of fits that aesthetic very well Oh, I didn't talk about her as a character all that much. So in the story that I have, or I guess like my head canon, I don't even think it's a story at this point. She will be Sato's like right hand woman, basically her best friend. So I think it would be cute. I do like the fact that I do have another female OC at this point because I feel like I don't draw Sato enough, but you know, I feel like their dynamic would be like they're girls, girls. They're very much like, for one another will do anything kind of very much powerful <laughs> kind of type so i think that's kind of cute and i feel like her and akemi would get along so you know i think it'd be a cute dynamic to bring as well should have probably apologized at the very beginning that you guys are going to be subject to, to my kind of 2 a.m rambles about just like everything zooming in my brain right now because i have lack of sleep but um uh, yeah, I think next week we'll do like part two and I will kind of finish up the chibis probably. If not, I will plan to do something with the OCs, probably like maybe portraitures and stuff because I feel like if I don't end up doing the full finished chibis, at least I want to do drawings of, I guess like of Selwyn, of Kaisen and of Rigo at this point and the reason being is that it took me forever to actually do like what I would consider a more finished drawing of Akemi because I've always done like very rough ones he's been in a lot of sketches I've done chibi versions of him but I think until I did the Vroid video is like when I actually started to do an actual drawing of him but then after that I didn't draw him again so I would like to play around with some other concepts and just like themes and illustrations that I always wanted to tackle and I'll kind of use them as kind of like the character 
to base it around. If that makes sense. I don't know. My brain's like so fried right now. I think what I'm finding now is that I want to be able to be more comfortable drawing my OCs more often now that I feel like every fandom that I'm in has some kind of like burning fire in it, which is making it very hard to enjoy the fandoms that I'm currently in. So sometimes I'll step away from doing fan art and stuff, and then sometimes I'll do like purely OC things. We'll see what happens, but that's kind of the plan for the most part. Oh, also. After I finished with the colors, I alpha locked the sketch layer that I had initially, so basically that multiply layer. And when I alpha lock it, I'm able to color only that area, which happens to be the lines. So I'm able to adjust the colors of it and kind of make it a little bit softer. So and usually I do this before rendering and cleaning up the illustration or picture or whatever I want to render. But because I didn't really have the plans to do that for this one, I don't think I did a very good job with making sure the colors matched a little bit more precisely. So because of that, I did try to attempt to render a little bit or clean up for Masaki. Just like his face, I was like darkening up some lines here and there for the line work alongside with I'm trying to see, did I give Masaki six fingers there? I hope I didn't. Uh, we'll see, but I also fixed up Sato's flowers here because hers were so weirdly placed, I decided to put the branch behind her so it made sense instead of it randomly floating. So yeah, I think I rambled too much. I will probably talk a bit more about my OCs in a different video that's more dedicated to maybe like one or two of them rather than eight of them because I don't think I did a very good job explaining any of the characters for today's video. Uh, but yeah, here's the quick time lapse. So we have Masaki, Koji, Kaisen, Sato, Akemi, and then we have Hansuke, who is like my little cat mascot. We have Selwyn from the, I guess like the academy. And then after that we have, I'm gonna call her Rico for now. And then, yeah, I think that's it in terms of the characters. And we have two new characters potentially coming eventually this year. I'm not gonna rush it because I feel like dumping three new OCs kind of burnt my brain a little bit. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's session though. And hopefully next week I will do finished versions of these. Bye.